So hello everybody, uh, I'm Stefan, but first thing first I want to start with, uh, with a video because it's morning basically uh, and then we'll, we'll continue with, uh, uh, with the actual presentation. So, considering that it's like early morning for, I think, the majority of us, uh, I thought that this video is, is kind of okay um, to, to include it in the beginning. But now let's talk about dynamic data protection. So this is this is the topic that I want to cover. It's uh, it's a new thing on the market. Um, that's why I said on the slides introducing dynamic data protection because again it's a new thing that uh, that uh, today I want uh, I want to cover. I also want to use this. Uh, this time slot, this presentation, as a teaser for an upcoming workshop that you have that you have today. So we'll see some of the things. If you have questions, please do. If not, we can uh, we can talk during the breaks. Uh, you can find me in the demo room and and so on. Um, so what is this dynamic data protection? What we are talking about? So dynamic data protection is not a product. It's a system that allows you or your company or whatever to identify uh, the individuals, to identify the entities that poses, let's say that poses the, the big or the bigger risk for your, uh, for your company data, confidential data, for your PI information, even for your assets. What, does, what this system will do, basically it will look for different behaviors of your employees, basically, and it will be able to assign them different risk levels, and, and you'll see that in, in a moment. Based on those, on those risk levels, you will be able to, or the system actually will be able to dynamically apply different uh, actions. Uh, not necessarily like simple allowing block, but different actions based on actual human behavior. So what, why are we talking about dynamic data protection and why it's an important thing like in the modern era, let's say. Well, um, we have this like mobile cloud era, mobile cloud combo that is great. Uh, why is great is because I think you can all agree with me. It's great because um, your workforce is now mobile. Your applications, your your infrastructure can now be cloud based, and this means that your mobile workforce can work literally from everywhere. This means that they can be productive from everywhere. Even if they are staying home, for example, they are, not, they are for example, not feeling that well, they can stay at home, but they can still work, so they can still be productive. Or they can be even in vacation, for example, and they need to do something quick, they will be able to do that. So this is a great thing. The not that great thing about this, about this mobile cloud combo is that it, it introduces some uh, challenges for the cyber security or IT security teams because you need to protect something which is mobile and also something which is cloud-based. It's not that simple with uh, with what we had in the past. We can build walls and, and, and that's it. Here on the slides there are just some um, uh, some examples. You, you you see the you see the sources at the at the bottom right. Uh, I will not I will not read them, but whether we like it or not. Cloud applications, cloud infrastructure will gain more and more um, traction, again, whether we like, we like it or not. And mobile workforce, it's an actual thing. Um, restricting your employees to access, for example, the, the, the emails on their, uh, on their personal devices, I think it's not, it's not, it's not a good idea. So why exactly this, okay, mobile, mobile cloud combo, mobile cloud era, 
is is good, but it's also uh, like uh, like mm, difficult for the IT security team to uh, to protect because today's data security approach, as you can see here, it's more or less threat centric. What this means? This means that uh, okay. So first thing, I'm not saying that it's um, you 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 need to get rid of it. I'm not saying that is necessary, but it's not sufficient. Why is that? Well, you see this digital activity of, of different actions, and you can see that you have good things and that you have bad things. Things that are easy to classify. So bad things that are easy to classify, for example, I don't know, malware, uh, things like that. So they are easy to classify, you have an antivirus solution, something simple, you are, you are done with that. You also have good things that are or should be easy to classify. For example, an employee. An employee, at least in theory, it should be good, and you classify it as good. As good. He has, a, let's say, a laptop that, that he can access your resources and so on. Is that enough? Well, not, because you are missing the part in the middle. You don't have context in what is going on in order to protect this mobile workforce, cloud, data, etc., etc. Uh, you like the context in which way? So, for example, I said that you have your employee, which again should be good and easy to classify. Do you have context in what are his actions? What he's doing with the actual data? Okay, he has access to a database full of customer-related information. That's okay. He needs to work with that data. Do you have insight? Do you have context in... Maybe that employee is sending that to a, to a competitor, or maybe it's uploading to, uh, to let's say, a free file sharing, file sharing service or whatever to work home or things like that. If you don't have visibility into that in this, again, mobile cloud uh, era or combo, it will be hard for you in order to, to protect, protect that thing. Again, I'm not saying that this is bad, of course. Uh, things like antivirus solutions, um, secure web gateways, etc. still exist and still works. Um, but you need to do some, do some additional steps in order to have your uh, protection, basically. So let's take this example. This example is from a traditional DLP solution. And we have this Kate here, which is, um, which is a chemist. And the, the example here is that this 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 user, uh, let's call her hey, let's call let's call her Kate, uh, is trying to copy a presentation uh, on a USB drive, a presentation for the leadership team. And the traditional DLP in our use case will block that action. Why is that? We don't care at this moment. Maybe it has a keyword in that slide or, we, or on that on those slides. Maybe it has something that again it might be. Um, confidential-ish, at least, but it's not necessarily uh, a data leak in terms of okay, he sent, uh, she sent, uh, she sh she sends the presentation to, to a competitor or things like that. So again, the DLP, the traditional DLP system will block that action, and that's it. So what are the user and administrator impacts? So the user impacts, as you can see on the slide, is that first your user will get frustrated, and you don't want to have frustrated employees should be on, uh, on your list. The other things that I think are more, more important here is that for sure she will find another way to do that because we are human, let's be honest, we'll find ways to bypass different security systems and because of that your DLP system will become ineffective. Why is that? It's because maybe you will start to add more exceptions, maybe you start uh, I don't know, disabling policies, and things like that. And if you have a system full of exceptions, it's more or less not, not the right thing to do. And again, the administrator impacts, they will be overloaded with, uh, with incidents or events. Um, they will have to go like one by one to see what happened in there. And again, then we can talk about like exceptions, disabling policies and things like that that are not useful for, uh, for you. So also talking about uh, today's data protection options, uh, we have something, but they are limited. So we have traditional UEBA, uh, we have traditional insider threat, we have traditional DLP that says block allow or, or things like that. 
Or, for example, a traditional insider trade that constantly monitors your employee activities. It might work. I'm not saying that it's not working. It might work, but it's not, again, uh, a good thing to do if you think, for example, on the administrator impact. So what you need to have, you need to have a solution that is able to cut through the noise. So basically, present the administrator or to you or to whatever only the useful information, only the, the, the important data, the actual data leakage, things like that. If you are able with the solution to cut through the noise, you'll be able to have a more effective DLP solution, protection, etc. So what we need to do in order to, to, have this, uh, to have this shift? So we need to look at, the, at this new uh, paradigm. This new paradigm means that you need to have context in order to have optimal decisions. Um, so in order to have context, it's okay to look at something which is behavior-centric. Behavior-centric or risk-adaptive protection is a thing that, again, allows you to, uh, to learn your employee behavior and then decide if he's doing like his normal job and allow you to do, it, to do that, whether he is being fished, for example, and you need more, more probably to block those actions, or he's just a malicious insider that wants to actually steal your data and again, you need to protect that. So you need, you, 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 you need to be able to differentiate between all these, these things, like a normal employee that is doing the job, an employee that has been compromised, for example, again, a phishing is like a simple example, or a malicious insider. If you decide to block everyone, as we saw before, it's not a good thing. If you are able to differentiate between that, you'll be able to, uh, to talk about the behavior-centric cybersecurity and in, uh, in uh, let's say, more detail about risk adaptive protection. <clears throat> so, for this one, we need this new approach, dynamic data protection. What this dynamic data protection does, more or less exactly what, what I already, already told you. So, it's a system that will, that, that will allow you to, again, uh, monitor or learn your employee behavior, uh, and apply different policies, different actions based on their, again, actual behavior. So, for example, take this, take this, uh, the same example, Kate, um, which tries to copy a presentation on USB drive for the leadership team. Um, she's a normal employee, she's doing her job, she's in a low-risk group. The policy will allow that action, but, for example, to encrypt that confidential data. Okay, so she's not blocked. She's able to do that action that, that she wants to do. The data will be encrypted, so okay, it needs to be protected somehow. And everyone is happy. She did, it, she did the, the, the action. There is like no overwhelmed administrator for, for, for the <coughs> system. So everyone, everyone is, is good. But what happens, for example, if she, she's getting a suspicious email it says on the slide the suppliers query about the order, etc. So she 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 gets a suspicious email that she doesn't remember sending a query or things like that. And on that email there is a link that she clicks on it. So she got fished. So what the system will do, so the system will move her to a high risk group in our in our use case and will auction in it in will actually block those actions, but we can also monitor her system to see if that system behaves in a different way. Maybe, I don't know, it's not a good example here with, with the phishing, but maybe uh, a malware uh, was downloaded on, the, on that PC, and of course that, that PC laptop, whatever, that machine will start behaving in a different, in a different way. So things like that you can observe, you can, you can, uh, you can see basically, and you can, you, you can decide on what to do based on this, on this uh, use cases. Here are just, well, overview or high level overview of, of risk groups, like low risk group and high risk, high risk group. There are actually five risk scores or risk groups that you can have in, in your system. So from low, which is risk level one, 
up to high risk group, which is level with risk, risk level five. So you have risk level one, two, three, four, and five. So you can be quite granular based on the context and, and things that you observe um, in your, in your um, again, employee's uh, behavior. So what happened for sure? So we have the context. We know that Kate is employee. It's either good, it's either compromised or malicious. What, what I told you like earlier. What actions did the system took? Well, for the low risk group, again, we protected the confidential data by encrypting it, not block everything. And after, in this case, she, she got fished. Okay, we blocked the action. We started uh, a machine, uh, a machine uh, monitoring. Um, and again, what I told you uh, already is the thing around um, administrator, administrators not being uh, overwhelmed. So, why is this the right choice for your data protection? Um, well, it brings fundamental challenges of the traditional DLP and gives them some, some resolutions. So basically, what are your challenges with the traditional DLP? What, what we, we already talked, like, um, there are uh, simple policies, block allow. You can, have, you can have other things, but usually block allow are the things that, that are working. So you can have that, of course, but you can improve everything. So you can improve your traditional DLP system with, again, behavior. When I'm talking about behavior, maybe this should be a question coming from you. What, what exactly is behavior? It's exactly what I'm doing in front of my PC. So starting from which websites I'm trying to access or I'm actually accessing, which emails I'm viewing in my, in my email client, which actions um, I take, like I know, sending emails, uploading data, printing, copying to, to different locations, things like that. And you can even enhance this, this data, dynamic data protection system with, with some other solutions that, again, will allow you to monitor the entity itself, the, the, the machine in this use case. So what will happen at the system level in order to have a clear picture of what happened. Maybe that, okay, in our example, again, um, she accessed the link, a website or whatever, and the malware was downloaded. And that malware basically uh, exfiltrates data. She's not necessarily her fault. In a traditional DLP system, you will see that Kate something is sending data to, I don't know, a website or whatever, to a particular destination. But in this case, with dynamic data protection, with different things around that, you can see that actual, you can, you can actually see that on that system, something happened and that thing that, that happened before it's actually, again, leaking data. So there are things that, that you need to take into, into, into consideration. Um, the good thing is that uh, first point dynamic data protection is the first and only solution in the market of, this, of, of its kind. So most probably others will follow. I'm not saying that, that this is a big no or, or something like that. But this is the first and only solution on the market that covers uh, all these use cases around dynamic data, data protection. It's not a concept, it's something that exists today. So if you, have, if you want to have dynamic data protection, not necessarily tomorrow, but uh, on Friday, for example, you can have it. So everything is here, everything is integrated, and it works. Um, if, we, if, we can, if we are talking about intelligent analytics, unified policy, and orchestrations, there are, I have to admit, different things that are together in this, uh, in this, in this phrase. Um, we have different uh, analytics either embedded in, in the DLP system or part of this behavior, user behavior analytics thing that is around. So there are different integrated analytics that, uh, that you can use and um, basically rely on, if I, if I can say that. You have unified policy. This allows you to have the same policy for all of your uh, channels, like network channels, when, when we're talking about web and email, endpoint channels, uh, storage systems, cloud services, because cloud, we're talking about mobile workforce and cloud, 
so you can extend the exact same unified policies or unique policies, however you want to call them, to your cloud services, Office 365, G Suite, are just two simple examples that, uh, that we can use. And because of this, we have this end-to-end human-centric security architecture. So you can cover all your channels with your employees in mind. So that's, uh, that's, um, uh, that's the basic idea. So how this risk adaptive protection looks like, um, I have on this slide, it's quite clear, uh, I have on this slide only three screenshots. These are three screenshots from my actual lab that, that we can see together um, in, the, in the expo room. What you have in the, in the first shot on, the, on this slide is that you can see your users, for example, from active data. So, okay, I have, I have to, to take a step back. This, uh, those screenshots here on the slides are from the DLP system, so I don't have screenshots with the, with the user behavior part. But these screenshots in the, from the DLP system, you can see that, again, you, you can see your users from Active Directory, so Active Directory integration is, is quite simple and normal. You can see your users and you can see their risk levels. Uh, I have only two users, one is risk level 3 and the other one is risk level 5 doesn't matter just to uh, to read what's on the what's on the slide so you can you can quickly see from the DLP system which are your users okay from active directory and which are their use scores use scores are not static they are dynamic so if if someone is doing like uh, let's say bad things uh, not so good actions the risk score will of course will rise but if they are starting to behave normally again, of course the risk level can, can go down. So this, this, this thing is, is dynamic. The second screenshot that you, that you see there with, with source, full name, etc. is from an actual incident. So this from an actual incident, um, this particular user, uh, I don't remember right now, but I think he, he uploaded some, some confidential data to, to an... Um, I think it was an HTTPS website. When this user did this action, violating a policy, he was a particular risk score. In this case, risk level five. The risk level five, well, the risk level that is saved together with the incident stays with the incident. So, for example, if this user, for example, got blocked at some point because his risk level was five, you will see that information in the incident even after two weeks. Because again, risk levels are dynamic. Maybe that user in the meantime started to do like uh, good things, behaving normally, and the risk level uh, was, uh, was decreased. But again, in the incident, you'll actually see uh, why exactly the system blocked him at that, at that moment. And the last screenshot here on the slide, it's, um, it's a screenshot from, from the policy builder or policy wizard, whatever. You can see the first two radio buttons, which are part of the traditional DLP, more or less. Um, the first option is like a pure traditional DLP system. It says that for every mesh condition to do this or that, okay, you, you, can, you can specify what to do, but it's a simple thing. Someone violates a policy, do this. Uh, the second radio button, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that we have, it's called Drip DLP. Drip DLP means that someone is trying to leak data in small pieces, for example. Imagine like, I don't know, a document and someone is trying to leak um, one page of that document each and every day or, or, or something like that. This is Drip DLP. But the important part is that you can see here at the bottom that you can have risk, um, risk adaptive protection users. So the, the risk adaptive protection users are the users from the first screenshot that have that, that, that are assigned the risk scores. So for, for those users, for example, you can have, again, different actions. And you can clearly see from, uh, from the slide, from the screenshot, actually, that Again, this is, my, this is my lab, this is my example, but you can see that if someone is on risk level 1, so it's like a normal user doing the normal job, they will be just monitored. So if, if they are violating a policy, for example, 
in this case, they will be just uh, monitored or notified. It, it's up to you. But if the risk level rises or increases, you will see that you will go to, to different actions. And at some point, in my case, risk level 4 and 5 means block those actions. So what the system will do will automatically apply your actions based on the risk levels. That's, I think, the simplest way to, um, to, to put this. You don't have, you as an administrator or, or, or someone from your company, you don't have to do extra steps. The system will do that, will do that for, uh, for, will do that for you. Um, now, um, if you have questions, again, we can, uh, we can meet in during the breaks or doing, uh, um, or, or, or sorry, or in, the, in, the, in the demo room. But if you, if you want to have like in-depth discussions or advanced questions or things like that, um, Mille from, from Comtrade will have at one o'clock here in Hall 2, uh, Hall 2, sorry, uh, in Hall 2 will have um, a workshop around how to achieve risk adaptive protection. I will be there so we can discuss more. Uh, we, can dis we can discuss more about that. Uh, and again, in the demo area, we, I can actually show you how the system, uh, how the system looks, how the system works. So I think I'm like ahead of time, right? Three minutes, okay, so it's okay. Uh, so this is my last slide. I have a uh, dynamic data protection. Again, it's not a product, it's a system. In our case, this, this system combines two products, first point DLP and first point UEBA. UEBA means user and entity behavior analytics. First point DLP has network components, so everything is agentless. It has storage components, so it's again agentless. Uh, and it has endpoint components. For endpoint components, yes, we are talking about an endpoint agent. We also have cloud components, which are again cloud based. Here, can here we can have different discussions. So this is the DLP part. On the UEBA part, on the user and entity behavior analytics, the user, behavior, user and entity behavior analytics pulls, it, yeah, pulls or receives information from different systems that has user data. So for example, for, for example from um, a, a badge access system, from an HR system, from, from the Windows machine, from things like that. Why is that? For example, a news case is that uh, the system can automatically put a user in a high-risk group, just to keep, uh, keep uh, on the slides, um, if, for example, they are in vacation, but they are coming to the office in order to copy confidential files. How the system can know that? The system will know that because it has information from the HR system, where more or less he put, your, he, he put his like, vacation week or time window, uh, how the system will know that he's in the office? Because again, the system can pull information from the from the badge access system if it has access. These are different technical discussions, um, and of, of course, from the endpoint system, from the DLP system, again, UEBA will know that that user will try to exfiltrate data. The system will automatically put him in a, in a high risk group, for example, risk level four or five. Uh, and based on the actions that you configure, it will be automatically blocked. So again, without interaction from your side. And it, I know that more or less sounds simple. It's not that simple in the back end. Um, but it's, uh, this is, this is, the, um, this is the, the main idea around dynamic data, data protection. Uh, now, talking about the whole map and things like that, I don't, I don't want to, to, um, to go into discussion at this point. Um, but for example, I think for next year or something like that, we'll have an endpoint agent which, which, which will be called Force Point One Endpoint, which will integrate all our solutions that are using uh, endpoints. So if you want, for example, to have Force Point DLP endpoint and Force Point Insider Threat, which is also an endpoint based solution, you'll have, uh, in this case, both under the same, same installer, same agent. Um, there will be some other things. So, for example, the DLP agent will have inside the components built in. So, for example, the DLP agent 
will be able to tell you if someone reads a particular email or visits a website which can pose a security risk. Uh, when I'm talking about security risks, just as a, a small side discussion, I'm not necessarily talking about confidential data, PII, the GDPR regulations, and, and etc. Um, security risk can be like um, uh, workplace violence. Well, it's not that common in, in our in our region, but if someone is looking on a, to I don't know to buy <laughs> to buy a gun or to buy military green knives on a on a website, maybe that's a trigger that should somehow um, create a red flag for you and investigate further. That's that's a use case that VBA can answer, or hopefully force point one agent at some point. So these are the things that, uh, that that we can cover with dynamic data protection and other use cases around around UEBA. Another use case, if someone is writing an email, uh, it might sound stupid right now, but this, if someone is, is writing an, uh, uh, a suicidal note, for sure that, that the way he types a normal email versus typing something on a phone, one document, whatever, it will be different. So, because time is up, I just want to uh, one minute, one minute for my uh, for my last video, and then uh, I'm uh, I'm out of here. The evolution of cybersecurity has brought us to a new place. Beyond anti-malware solutions, network access control, patch management, past IDS, IPS biometric authentication and 128-bit secure routers to here, to the critical point where we humans interact with content and data. This is where we come in, with systems uniquely designed to provide an intelligent understanding of people's behavior and intent. Protection at the place where technology is most valuable and security is most vulnerable the human point. Force point. Protecting the human point. So yeah, that was it for my side. Thank you. And again, after that, in the demo area, doing lunch, whatever, <laughs> we can... Uh,